Welcome back to the NFL today. We approach kickoff time in the Mile High City. Introductions live there at Mile High Stadium. Marino and Elway, it should be an epic battle. The AFC Divisional Playoff game, Miami and Denver. We'll be back with the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. In the meantime, enjoy the game here on CBS. CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Elway and Marino. Their names are synonymous with football brilliance. Two men who 16 years ago brought a new quality of quarterbacking into the NFL and have since become the most prolific passers in league history. If the eyes are indeed the windows to the soul, theirs speak volumes. John Elway's eyes, an exclamation point to a Hall of Fame career. He has come back this year rejuvenated, poised for a second Super Bowl ring in what may be his final season. For Dan Marino, the look in his eyes is one of hunger and determination. He reached the Super Bowl in just his second season, but hasn't been back since. Now, with the clock winding down on his career, does he have the supporting cast needed to return to the championship game and to realize his lifelong football dream? John Elway and Dan Marino. Two quarterbacks whose illustrious paths now cross in their first ever playoff meeting. A spot in the AFC Championship on the line today at Mile High. sunshiny 50 degree day we welcome you to mile high stadium in denver colorado as the divisional playoffs continue here in denver the denver broncos playing host to the miami dolphins good afternoon everyone welcome to electric mile high stadium along with phil sims i'm greg gumbel yeah it's electric why shouldn't it be two of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game will do battle again and john elway and dan marino and for the second time in three weeks and in that game on monday night in miami won by the dolphins 31 21 Dan Marino had things all his own way that night. Well, Greg, we asked him, Dan, why did you play so well in that game on that Monday night? And he says, hey, I just made plays. I threw the ball very well, and my receivers made good adjustments to make those catches. That's what they want to do today. Now, on the other side, we asked John Elway, why did you struggle so much in that Monday night game? He says, hey, one reason why. Terrell Davis could not run the football, and when he doesn't run, that means our play-action passing game is not there, and it makes our offensive line have a much tougher time protecting me when I do throw. Well, both teams anticipate a different sort of football game here this afternoon. What more could you ask for? Two of the great quarterbacks of all time. John Elway, Dan Marino will do battle when we come back right after this. Well, you can bet the Miami Dolphins are glad it isn't cold and snowy and windy. Temperature at 50 degrees. 
and the forecast is for sunny skies the rest of the day. Yeah, that man says, you know, we don't like the cold weather. We don't play in it. We don't know it. We don't do well in it. You've got to think he likes the way it is here. Mike Shanahan, all he wants is another crack at the team that knocked his guys off by 10 points three weeks ago down in Miami. The Miami Dolphins have won the toss, and they've elected to receive Jason Elam. You see his numbers on the season. Deep for the Dolphins, 31, Brock Marion, number 20, John Avery. Avery has returned 43 kicks for just over 25 yards a pop, and we're underway. This is Avery from the one. Out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. And Dan Marino, more pass attempts, more pass completions, more yards passing, and more touchdown passes than anyone in NFL history. His offensive line, veteran left tackle Richmond Webb re-injured the tendon in his left tricep. Left guard Brent Smith moves to tackle. John Bach moves in at guard. In the backfield, Abdul Jabbar and Pritchett. Ed Perry replaces the injured Troy Drayton at tight end. First down Miami from their own 27. Marino quick pass and dropped at the 30-yard line by O.J. McDuffie. And now the Denver defense, a tried and true front four in Smith, Trailer, Price, and Tanavasa. The linebackers, Romanowski, Cadrez, and Mobley are quick and they are mean. And in the secondary, rookie strong safety Eric Brown hobbled by a groin injury. 12-year veteran Tyrone Braxton starts in his place. Bernie Parmalee is the lone back behind Marino on second and ten. And the give is to Parmalee across the 30 to about the 33-yard line, or rather across the 25 to about the 28. Well, Greg, when you look at this Miami offense, the key for it today is, you've already talked about it, Dan Marino. They're going to run the ball every once in a while just to keep the Denver Broncos a little off balance, but it's about throwing the football and making those plays. Denver on the other side, they think the key is something they couldn't do down in Miami a couple weeks ago, rush the quarterback, hit Dan Marino. He got good protection down there. That's why he was successful. Pritchett and Parmalee are in the backfield now on third and eight. Marino over the middle, incomplete. Pritchett had it and dropped it, and the Dolphins will have to kick it away. Two dropped balls on Marino in that series. Well, when you come into a game and you know you're going to have a chance to win this game, losing and winning depends on how you throw. And, of course, catching goes along with that. And the Miami Dolphins would have had an easy first down if either one of the passes would have been caught. Klaus Wilmsmeyer will kick to Darian Gordon. High kick. Gordon from the 16. And dumped it down at about the 27-yard line, and a penalty marker is down, downfield. Penalty will be against the Broncos. Our official today is Bill Carollo. Holding number 25 on the receiving team. It's a 10-yard penalty. First down. Darius Johnson is the guilty party, so that will back the Broncos up. And John Elway will start in a bit of a hole. Elway leading the Denver Broncos into the postseason for the 10th time in his 16 years. Up front, a steady veteran offensive line of Jones, Schlereth, Tom Nalen, Dan Neal, and Harry Swain. In the backfield, the NFL's leading rusher in Terrell Davis. And those three receivers accounted for more than 200 catches, more than 3,000 yards during the regular season. Line of scrimmage will be the eight-yard line. All of the Denver Broncos told us, Phil, that it was a very, very loud stadium down in Miami when they played on Monday night. As they reversed. As loud as any place they said they've ever played in, which is surprised when you talk about the Miami field. Davis. 
squeaks through a hole up close to the 15 yard line. A pickup of about six on the play. A look at the Dolphin defense. The Dolphins front four racked by injury. Tim Bowens and Jason Taylor out. Baron Tanner and Shane Burton replace them. The linebacking unit anchored by Miami's leading tackler, Zach Thomas. And in the secondary, Terrell Buckley and Sam Madison with eight picks each during the regular season. Elway pulls it down, goes down the sideline. Rod Smith with the catch. What a catch over the defender by Rod Smith for a first down. Good coverage by Sam Madison. He has Rod Smith man-to-man. -man. John Elway pulls it down, and Rod Smith changed his route from a quick out, runs up the sideline, but look at number 29 where he is at. He is all over the receiver, and Rod Smith does a good job of going back, fighting for the football, and making the catch. First down, Broncos, their own 29. Davis, big hole, left side, to about the 32 or 33-yard line. Well, when you look at this Denver offense, the key is, we, we know we talked about the game they played three weeks ago. We're asking Mike Shanahan. He says, look, it's this simple. They whipped our rear ends up front. Their seven beat our offensive line. That's why we couldn't do anything. Now, Miami's defense, I look at it today, the big key, and Jimmy Johnson kind of agrees, Terrell Buckley and Sam Madison must be terrific so the other guys, the safeties, and everybody else can get in there and stop Terrell Davis. Double tight end for the Broncos. Elway eludes the rush and was almost intercepted. Wow. I mean, how many times if you watch the Denver Broncos play and John Elway buys that extra time, moves around that time, it must have taken 10 seconds, but nobody looked down the field. Look here. Look across the field. They tried an out and up to the right to Rod Smith. He was covered, and John Elway panics at the last second, and he's lucky he doesn't throw the interception. Robert Jones was the man who almost had it. He had two interceptions, returning one for a touchdown during the regular season. Five wide receivers for the Broncos on third and six. McCaffrey across the field. First down yardage. Terrell Buckley and Brock Marion rode him out after about an eight-yard pickup. Well, this is the formation that's kind of hurt the Denver, I mean, the Miami Dolphins defense over the last couple of weeks. Five wide receivers, and this time the Dolphins play it pretty conservatively. Don't take a chance. Look at it. It's kind of a zone coverage. Ed McCaffrey comes underneath. Everybody else is looking for the deeper route. Gets enough yards for the first down. Line of scrimmage is now the 41-yard line. And Terrell Davis is to the lower part of the field as a wide receiver. Elway complete to Shannon Sharp close to midfield. Well, Shannon Sharp didn't have much of a game against this team earlier three weeks ago because the Miami Dolphins, they double covered him almost every single play, but you can see what they did that time. They put him in motion, brought him into the formation, and when a receiver moves, it's much more difficult to cover him, and it's really harder to double team him. Zach Thomas in on the tackle, no surprise there. You see the distance to go for a first down. Terrell Davis is gonna get that and more. The 40, and out of bounds inside the Dolphin 40-yard line. Let me tell you one of the big keys here. Good blocking by the offensive line, but what you notice too, look to the screen here. Kenny Mixon is down at the bottom of your screen down here. He gets caught on the block. Now that's this is where they miss number 99, Jason Taylor, because he is nothing but about speed, getting off those blocks and making those tackles and keeping those long running plays from happening. That defensive front four losing a lot in Jason Taylor and Tim Bowen. First down from the 39. The toss to Davis. Turns the corner. Inside the 30 and out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. 
Let me just give you a look, Greg, and everybody at home what this defense is about for the Miami Dolphins. Here are the corners. Look at this. They're man and man. They're just going to run all over the field. And these two safeties, they're free to come up and make the tackle. But look, Terrell Davis does a good job, makes that dip inside, and it made Calvin Jackson hesitate. Then Terrell Davis breaks it outside and gets the good game. 35 yards for Terrell Davis. He only had 29 in the Monday Nighter at Miami. Elway going to throw. Over the middle has his man, Rod Smith. Smith close to the 15-yard line. We have already seen more successful, like, fake or play-action passes this game than they ran three weeks ago. Rod Smith coming across the formation, nobody covering him. But because you run the football, that enables John Elway to get outside the pocket and gives those receivers that extra time to get open down the field. Tenth play of this drive. Derek Lavelle dancing inside across the 15. You know, this Miami team hit hard by injuries. Jimmy Johnson told us last night that this is the most number of significant injuries he's ever been involved with as a coach. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I mean, just uh, everything, you know, the defense, key players on offense. But he says, hey, I don't care. We still got a chance. He's got his team believing. Don't worry about these injuries. Don't worry about the fact that we're going there. All these things, just go out and play. Because you did it three weeks ago, we can do it here. Five wide receivers on second and eight. LA over the middle, complete to number 84, Shannon Sharp. Well, I tell you, good job that time by Calvin Jackson reading John Elway makes the big hit and a good job of hanging on the football when you're going over the middle, getting hit that hard, too. You know, talking about those injuries, when we asked Jimmy Johnson, well, you know, how does that affect you? He said, oh. he said, you know, I think if we play lights out, we can keep we it close. <laughs> <laughs> You know, his goal is right here. he doesn't think it affects just keep it close. Let's get in the fourth quarter, then we can make some plays to win the game. Third and short. <laughs> Davis diving for first down yardage and has it. The orange line across your screen, the CBS first down marker tells you how far the teams have to go to reach a first down. Well, you know, you talk about those injuries, Greg. Really, the big thing is Tim Bowens is a big, big run stopper inside. And what he does, he occupies blockers, and he lets those linebackers for the Miami Dolphins run around. Now, when you put the substitutes in, if they don't occupy those blockers, then Zach Thomas and Robert Jones and, and, and Rodgers can't run around and make those tackles like they're used to. First and goal, Elway to throw into the end zone, incomplete at the goal line. And a penalty marker is down. Marker is down on the near side of the field, and it's against Miami. Looks like offsides against the Miami defense. Offside defense, number 91, lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal penalty remains first down. 91 is Lorenzo Bromel. Meanwhile, those first 10, 12, 15 plays that Mike Shanahan scripts for the game have worked well so far. Well, they have. We're seeing a little bit of everything. You can see that big card. Look at it here. There's different colors on it. The different, And that tells him which people to send in the game. And, of course, he can read the play that's already written down. Davis to the goal line and stops short of pay dirt. Now you can already tell in this game, this Denver Bronco offensive line doing a much better job than they did three weeks ago. A little more physical, occupying the defensive lineman, letting Terrell Davis get that speed going and getting those positive yards. Denver has held the ball it's almost seven and a half minutes. Second and goal. Touchdown. 
23 touchdowns on the regular season, 21 of them rushing and two receiving. That drive just epitomized what this Denver Bronco team, what it's been about for the last two years. That's about lining up our offensive line and then Terrell Davis really doing the damage. 92-yard drive, Davis accounting for 38 of them on the ground. Elam's extra point is good. Denver had scored only six points on two field goals in the first quarter over the last three games. They get a touchdown here from Terrell Davis and take a 7-0 lead. John Elway just had a little extra tape applied to his left ankle. He led the Miami scoring drive. 92 yards in just under eight minutes. And scoring first is big on the Broncos list of important things to do. In the end zone, Avery drops the ball, and now Brock Marion covers it. It'll be a touchback. So on the virtue of Terrell Davis's touchdown run, Davis has already had a better day today than he had all Monday night in Miami. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of the Super Bowl. Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. And by the United States Army, be all you can be. Mentioned a short while ago how scoring first has been big for the Denver Broncos this season. On opening drives, 54 to 9. That's called getting a leg up early on in the game. And now the fans come alive again. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the backfield behind Dan Marino. This is Abdul-Jabbar. A yard, maybe two on the play. We said earlier it's an electric atmosphere. What's it look like to you downstairs, Armin Katayan? You know, Greg, the big theme behind the scenes this week for the Broncos has been playing at the tempo that they haven't played all year, showing the world what playoff tempo is all about. So far, I've seen them, what, six, seven, eight times this year. They're moving from point A to point B faster than they have all year. Steve Atwater called it playing on cloud nine, and right now they're on it. Back to you. All right, Armin, thanks on second and eight. Movement on the offensive line. The left side of that line where Richmond Webb is missing today. Prior to the snap, false start, number 61, illegal snap, five-yard penalty, remains second down. That's the center, Tim Ruddy. A little flinch, you know, he's like, oh, was that on two, Dan? Are you sure? It must have. You, are you sure you said two in the huddle? Yes. Uh, you know, get the crowd noise going. That's why the Dolphins, they got to find a way to get a first down, settle the defense down to the Broncos, and especially the crowd. Miami Dolphins did not have a penalty in their victory over the Broncos. Out of the backfield, Abdul Jabbar. Jabbar across the 20 for a pickup of about four. You know, it was a lot of fun last night talking to Jimmy Johnson, Greg, and the one thing he said to us that made a lot of sense, he stressed his players all week long, okay, we're going out there to play all that. He says, we got to beat these guys with our base stuff on offense and defense. And listen, my coaches, I've instructed them, we're going to have a nice wrinkle, a couple little things in there to change it up, but what we mainly got to do, physically win the game with what we've been doing all year long. Jimmy Johnson is known for little things like that onside kick he pulled at Buffalo last week. Four wide receivers. Marino just barely beats the play clock. Quick pass is complete across the 25, and that's short of the first down. Pick up a five on the play to Aronde Gadsden. Well, the one positive thing I can say about the Miami Dolphins, Miami Dolphins offense in these first two series, they're protecting the quarterback well. So that means Dan Marino is going to have some chances as this game goes along to throw it down the field and have success. Darian Gordon standing at his own 30-yard line. High and short. Fair catch called for by Gordon, and he lets it bounce at the 35. And the ball doesn't go any further. 
Bounce at the 35, down at the 34 for a 38-yard punt. And we'll take time out and come back to Denver right after this. Back at Mile High Stadium, 3.20 to play in the first quarter. Broncos with the ball in a 7-0 lead at their own 34-yard line. Elway throwing. McCaffrey. And he is ruled down inside the 35-yard line. Boy, good job by Ed McCaffrey getting up and running just in case that play was not blown dead. But really good coverage on this play. Watch McCaffrey go up the field. Brock Marion has him on the outside. There's a safety coming from the inside. The perfect throw and way to lay out to make the catch. 34 yards on the play. And a first down at the 33-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. Davis. Davis hole left side inside the 30. Well, modern day technology is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Well, Phil? well, it is. Look what we picked up in the first drive. John Elway, watch his hands as he's underneath the center. The hands don't move, it's a running play. Now, watch when it's a pass. He rubs his fingers together, drops back to pass. And then another time, it's a play action pass. Rubs those fingers, fakes it. Well, that's not something that's easily detectable by well, the defense. Unless you're laying on the ground, looking up underneath there, you're not going to see it. Inside two minutes for the first quarter, McCaffrey in motion. <laughs> Away over the middle, and wide open is Terrell Davis, who loses his footing near the 20-yard line. Now, the one thing I've noticed, though, Greg, even that play that Ed McCaffrey caught down the field, they're moving their wide receivers, trying to give them a chance to get away from the defensive backs of the Miami Dolphins and to get better matchups. As you saw, the last time when McCaffrey went in motion, he was against the safety and not Sam Madison. Holloway now 7 of 8 for 88 yards. First down from the 20, and a double tight end set up for the Broncos. Davis, right side, room to run, cuts it back, will go for the touchdown. Well, the Miami, I mean, the Dem Denver Broncos, they're known for this play. Take the ball, pitch it to Terrell Davis, and what he does, he takes it straight ahead, but look at that. As soon as he sees a hole, he gets right up into it, and what a nice cut that time by Terrell Davis. Sam Madison saw the cut back, couldn't react to it in time. Touchdown, his second of the day, Terrell Davis. Elam is right on the money with the extra point. 1-0-2 to play in the first quarter, and it's Denver by two touchdowns. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by American Express. American Express helps you do more. And by IBM. Are you ready for e-business? These terrific pictures from on high being provided by Southwest Airlines. Back at Mile High Stadium in Denver, the Broncos have already amassed 155 total yards. John Avery trying to light a spark under the Miami Dolphins. Avery, five yards deep, will not run it out. And so the Dolphins will start first down from their own 20-yard line, and the Bronco crowd is up and excited. The Denver toss, Terrell Davis does such a good job with it. What they do, they toss the ball to Terrell Davis. He wants to take it outside, but if there's nothing there, look inside, and he breaks it up in there. Terrific block by Tom Nalen and Mark Schlereth, at the left guard. They opened the hole for Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis named today the MVP of the National Football League by the Associated Press. Two touchdowns. And the Broncos lead at 14-0, and now Marino goes to work, and they'll start on the ground. Bernie Parmalee for no game. Well, Bill Romanowski, number 53, has really had an outstanding year. 
This time in the middle, coming on the blitz. Trying to guess that it's pass on first down, but the Denver Bronco defense, nothing like they were three weeks ago against this Miami offense. Much more aggressive, trying to take it to the, to the Miami Dolphins. From the shotgun, Marino. Great catch across the 40-yard line for a first down by O.J. McDuffie. 21-yard pickup. And that will most likely be the last play of the first quarter. Denver held the football for just over 10 minutes in the first quarter. And Miami just under five. That's the end of the first quarter. Broncos lead at 14-0. We're coming back to Mile High Stadium for quarter number two right after this. Watch O.J. McDuffie. Here he is, lines up and just goes down the middle of the field. Tyrone Braxton in there faking the blitz, but look at how much space in the middle of the field against this Bronco defense. And this is where Miami really hurt him three weeks ago. And to be successful, this, that's the coverage they see a lot of. Dan Marino's got to throw it down the middle with success. Now their first first down of the ball game as we start the second quarter. Pritchett and Parmalee are the backs for Marino. That's complete to Aronde Gadsden. You know, that time, John Mobley was in position to knock the ball down. He reached his hand up, and it went by him, and he went, man, how did I miss that? Dan Marino still got that arm. The Dolphins going to a hurry-up offense. No huddle. I think it's a good thing to do right now. Change the pace of the game. Their second first down. And stacked up at midfield is Bernie Parmalee. Keith Trailer, number 94, led the charge for Denver, and that's a four-yard loss. Now, just because you hurry it up doesn't mean it's going to help your running game any, that's for sure. I mean, I think the Miami Dolphins, they really struggle. And Keith Trailer, number 94, big, strong, kind of slanting to the left or to, to the offense's right, makes the tackle in the backfield. Call it a five-yard loss at second and 15. Over the middle, complete, across the 40. And down to the 36-yard line is Stanley Pritchett. Remember, in the first quarter, he dropped one just like that out of the backfield. You know what I like, Greg, though? When you're going to win a football game, what's, what's your uh, objective as a coach? Put the ball in the hands of your best player. That is still Dan Marino for the Miami Dolphins. So Jimmy Johnson, let him go with the no huddle. Spread the, spread the field a little and just try to make those plays. Marino looking at a third and two now. keep it on the ground coming this way first down yardage and breaking across the middle again is Bernie Parmalee boy good job by Bernie Parmalee breaking those tackles and and it's so many times they're still in the hurry up just lining up what this does it just kind of keeps Denver from making substitutions and it, you hope it makes them play a simpler defense Another first down for the Dolphins. And movement on the right side. This play will not count as penalty markers fly. Well, the question was, was the defensive line in the neutral zone before an offensive lineman moved? Prior to the snap, full start. Five-yard penalty on the offense. The, the left slot man moved before the snap. The left slot man. Well, that's a new position, you know, that left slot. Do you draft for that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have a keen eye for talent, but the crowd noise, you know, that you're going to get about four or five moving penalties on offense when you go on the road in a playoff atmosphere, and especially here in, in Maha Stadium. Second penalty of the day against the Dolphins. Yeah. 
Marino with time has his man inside the 20 and out of bounds close to the 10 yard lines is McDuffie. Now it's a good job of throwing and catching by Dan Marino and OJ McDuffie but really this offensive line Richmond Webb is out you know they had to restructure it. Brent Smith didn't get to take one snap at left tackle the whole week and what a job he is doing so far protecting Dan Marino. First down Dolphins at the Denver 12. And the marker flies before the snap. Prior to the snap, full start, number 65, offense. Five yard penalty, remains first down. That's the right guard, Kevin Donnelly. What did I say? Four or five? Let's 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 rephrase that. We might get about eight of them maybe, in this game. Maybe you meant four or five in the first half. Yeah, maybe in the first half. But Denver, one of the reasons why teams have been throwing the ball on them so well, this defense, the pass rush. Early in the year, they were getting to the quarterback. The last six or seven games, the pass rush has not been doing it. Marino has his man inside the 15-yard line. Pick up of about five, and that's McDuffie again. McDuffie with 1,050 yards receiving on the year and seven touchdowns. Well, Dan Marino getting a play from the sideline, just taking his time. I kind of like this approach. Meanwhile, defensive coordinator Greg Robinson. Well, John Cheerlink, we talked about that pass rush. He is the pass rush specialist for the Denver Broncos. Marino flips out of the backfield. Parmelee, Parmelee diving inside the five-yard line. Nine-yard pickup on the play. It'll be third and about two. Now, the thing that happens when you get good protection, that last play illustrated it. Dan Marino looks down the field. Really good coverage. Nobody open at the last second because you got all this extra time. You dump the ball short, and the running back can pick up extra yardage. Significant drive for the Dolphins. This is the 10th play of this drive coming up. Dolphins go to a double tight end now, and it's Ed Perry and Hendrick Lusk. And now, Marino calls timeout and walks away from the play. That stops the clock with 10-14 to play here in the first half, and the Dolphins knocking on the door for the first time today. Johnson that have that little surprise element on each side of the ball. The no huddle, of course, is one of the surprises he's using on offense. Ed Perry, the tight end. Abdul-Jabbar, the only back behind Marino on third and two. Quick drop, throws to the corner. It is incomplete. Lamar Thomas, his intended receiver, it would have been enough for the first down. Boy, good job by Darian Gordon, number 21. Waits for Lamar Thomas to come across the formation. Look, he hustles all the way there. Because you're on the goal line, you have the advantage of looking for that short pass. He does it, gets his hand in there, and knocks it out. Olindo well, Mare on to attempt the field goal from 23 yards out has been in something of a slump. He has missed four of his last nine attempts. just inside the goalpost. So the Dolphins are on the board with 10.07 to play in the first half. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GMC Envoy. United Airlines, rising is a daily commitment to making flying more civilized. United is rising. And by the NASDAQ MX Market Group, the market of markets. Greg Dumble, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan back at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Amari field goal has the Dolphins on the board, 14-3, to cap a 76-yard drive. Vaughn Hebron, who pulled a hamstring in practice and was doubtful right up until game time, takes the kick. Family marker down, and he is met and dropped just across the 20.
as we await the call. Tripping number 42 on the receiving team to be a 10 yard penalty remains first down. That's Detron Smith. We'll take the opportunity to remind you coming up at halftime. We'll be sending you to our New York studio for the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. Jim, Marcus, Brent, and Mike have first half highlights. Steelers coach Bill Cower has analysis and a preview of the San Francisco Atlanta game. Coming up on the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. So the Broncos will start from their own 13. Let's see if it's a runner pass. John Ilway must be a runner. It is indeed. Davis, big hole. And breaks free. 30, 35. Brought down across the 40 by Sam Madison. Well, we had a chance to talk to Terrell Davis and what he said. What's going to be the difference from the last game three weeks ago till today? He says, I'm rested. I got that week off. I didn't have to practice. And he says, I got fresh legs. I really struggled at the end of the year. And he says, the Miami Dolphin defense, they haven't seen the Terrell Davis, the runner, they're going to see today. And I think you can notice, even at home watching it, how much quicker and how fast he is getting to the hole. 91 yards already for Davis. Davis. To the 48. Maybe the 49. Well, the Miami Dolphin defense, I mean, there's a couple people that got to come up big. The corners, they're doing a pretty good job. Zach Thomas, number 54. Hey, they got to do something. They go away from him. They got to find a way to get in there, crowd the line of scrimmage, and make those tackles. Now watch Shannon Sharp, number 84. Good job. Does a good job on Derek Rogers. Keeps him out of the play. Gives Terrell Davis another nice hole to run into. Terrell Davis now at 100 yards on the day. Now that's not a good sign when you have success at all three spots. Second and two. Lavelle in momentarily for Davis gets the first down. Well, you know, we talked about Greg, and you know, we've seen Terrell Davis do such a good job. Tony Jones, the left tackle, hobbling off. Jones, the 11-year veteran out of Western Carolina. That would be huge for the Denver Broncos. Let's watch and see if we can find out what happened. He's the left tackle. Here he is. There he comes. Oh, and the runner falls into his knee. And the Dolphins use a timeout. 7.55 to play first half. That's left tackle Tony Jones still continuing to be worked on on the side. So now Harry Swain moves to left tackle and Matt Lepsis moves in at right tackle. Elway, time, going for it all down the far side, incomplete. Rod Smith, the intended receiver, and Sam Madison was there with it. Now I'm telling you, anytime the Denver Broncos want to do this, they can throw it down the field today, and they're guaranteed of this. The corners for the Dolphins, one-on-one. -on -one. And look at Sam Madison, puts that hand out, always feeling where the receiver is. And I'll say this about Sam Madison, number 29. Jimmy Johnson, who's been in the NFL and had a, a lot of good defensive backs, he says, this is the best corner I have ever coached. Terrell Davis, flanked to the top as a wide receiver. Elway looks to this side, throws Shannon Sharp. I beg your pardon. Make that. Yes, it is Shannon Sharp. Now they went to five wides, and while the Denver Broncos did, you could see what happened. You put Shannon Sharp out, way to the right like a wide receiver, and you get a linebacker singled up on him. And Derek Rogers, that's that's tough duty for him to go out and have to cover Shannon Sharp all over the field. The ball just short of a first down will be third and one. Let's see if we can see John Elway. Hands look steel. That movement should be a run. And he did not, Ooh, close did to not first get it. Down, but short. You know, usually when you run the quarterback sneak, these officials will give you the benefit of the doubt. And that time, John Elway went in the line of scrimmage and he went backwards. There was, there was nowhere to go. Well, the fans want Mike Shanahan to go for it on fourth down. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. He's. 
Mike Shanahan's over on the sideline. He is tearing up that script he's got, looking for that play. So you can tell just by his reaction there that he plans on going for it on fourth down. That's almost a full yard, yard short. On fourth down, number 89, Dwayne Carswell, an extra tight end, comes into the game. Now, he, is, he has been four for ten so far this year, the Denver Broncos are in fourth down. But Mike Shanahan has been a risk taker in these situations. But I've got to, well, he's going to five wide receivers. I would think he would hand it to Terrell Davis. Look for the quarterback draw. Well, way quick roll, quick throw. Down the sidelines, out of bounds, inside the 25-yard line. Well, usually a lot of times when he always under center, that's a quarterback sneak. I thought maybe the quarterback draw, but they go to the play that they run so many times. Rod Smith, look at him coming across in motion, and what they do, Elway sprints out, and they just throw it to the sideline real fast before the defense can react. So the Broncos now set up at the Miami 22. to the 13-yard line. Brock Marion with the tackle. Well, you know, I, as I watch this so far, the Miami Dolphins defensive line, when you lose Tim Bowens and you lose Jason Taylor, two really quality defensive linemen, it is tough to stop the running game. And Terrell Davis, 12 carries for 109 yards. To go with those two touchdowns. And most consecutive 100 yards rushing game in the playoffs. Terrell Davis now moves one closer to John Riggins. Second and two from the 14, Davis. Moves the pile for first down yardage. Well, when you're sitting there on the sideline for the Miami Dolphins and you are just getting gashed by the running game of the Denver Broncos, now look. Look what they've done. They're just going to put everybody in there and leave single coverage. They're going to get both safeties involved with the running game because they got to find a way to stop Terrell Davis. Broncos had just 219 total yards in the loss to Miami. And you see Jimmy Johnson fired up. Yeah, that's why the, the fans are reacting. Jimmy can get a little animated on the sidelines. First down from the 10. Elway, end zone, incomplete. Rod Smith is intended receiver. Uh, you, you know, it's hard to sit here and say, boy, you're impressed with something so far, the Miami defense, because the Broncos have just driven it down the field every time. But the corners, the coverage has been exceptional by the corners down the field. And John Elway, he knows that the going's pretty tough when you throw into those wide receivers. Derek Lavelle, the lone back behind Elway now second down. And Lavelle gets the toss. Cuts it back. Inside the 10. Inside the 5. Touchdown. What is happening? This Miami Dolphin defense. It likes to run. It is fast. The cutback runs, they're over pursuing, and when the runners stop and go the other way, there is nobody on the backside there to make the tackle. Third rushing touchdown of the day for the Broncos. Elam's kick is good. 439 to play in the first half as the Broncos extend to 21 to 3, and Jimmy Johnson's gonna take a walk and do a little talking. Derek Lavelle picking his way into the end zone. 21-3 Broncos. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Saturn and by the American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. Once again, these aerial shots provided by Southwest Airlines. 
439 to play here in the first half. And the Broncos with a 21-3 lead and an unhappy Jimmy Johnson on the sideline. This is short kick, Avery from the five. Dips outside on the far side, 25, and out of bounds, short of the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown, Phil. Well, let's take a look at it from the defensive side. Here you come. Watch Derek, Le Derek Lavelle just takes it to the right. And watch as he cuts back the safeties for the Dolphins. Brock Marion misses the tackle that time. But watch Zach Thomas, the middle linebacker. His job, seek and destroy. He's in good position, but again, gets a little too far outside. You've got to watch the cutback. That's the main thing, the Denver Broncos offense, what they like to do when they're running the football. That'll tell you a lot about what the Broncos have accomplished today. Marino from his own 28. Stumbling across the 30 to about the 32. Tyrone Braxton making the tackle on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know, the, the Miami Dolphin offense, you know, they have success throwing the football, and they did that one drive. They go down and kick the field goal, but, you know, you're kind of caught in between. What do we do? Try to hurry up and get this thing and score? Or do you slow it down? Because you got to think something of your defense. You, If you go three and out, you put your defense back out in the field again, this game could be over. Thomas and Thomas has enough for a first down you know I don't know how many times as I've watched Dan Marino through the years as you get a look at Lamar Thomas but I always keep looking at him and go well I think he's losing it a little I don't know and but I tell you as I've watched him these last five or six weeks the Dolphins have started to throw the ball he looks good his feet look lively he's moving in the pocket and his arm looks as strong as, it, as I've ever seen it. You can see him bouncing on the ball from his feet back there. Marino throws, incomplete. Pass intended for Ed Perry. No pass interference. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. But so we were talking to John Elway out here. Watch this. Damn, it's a blitz. Steve Atwater coming free. Dan Marino sees it. John Mobley does a good job getting his hand up and knocking the pass down. But we were talking to John Elway. He said he loved throwing the football down in Miami. It felt good, the humidity, all that. And he says, out here, it's real dry. And he says, Dan Marino, I can't wait to see how many times he licks that big hand trying to get some moisture on it to throw the football out here in Denver. Second and 10. Getting nowhere, Stanley Pritchett. Well, they're getting no pressure on Dan Marino in the passing game. So the Denver Broncos, watch John Mobley. Second and 10. They're going to take a chance, try to get to the quarterback. But if they run the ball, just get in the way and make the tackle. Third and call it 13. Close to the 45-yard line to Gadsden. Good job by the Denver Broncos defense. They blitz. You make it. They make you throw it quick, short of the first down. That'll take us up to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in the first half, and the Broncos lead it 21 to three. Coming up at halftime, we'll be sending you back to New York studio for the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, and Mike Lombardi will have first half highlights, plus Steelers coach Bill Cower will have first half analysis plus a preview of the San Francisco Atlanta game. That's coming up on the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. And if you're sitting at home and you're wondering, why is Phil Sims reading that? Well, Greg Gumbel's back. How you doing, Greg? Hey, Phil. All right. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just got to play hurt, Greg. 
Two minutes to play on fourth down. Darian Gordon. Fair catch at the seven. Well, you look at the Broncos, their first three possessions in 14 plays, four plays for touchdown, then 11 plays. I mean, everything they are trying in the running game is working. Now, the passing game, when John Elway has thrown the ball down the field to his receivers against the Miami Dolphins defensive backs, the corners especially, not quite as easy. Elway's numbers, 9 of 12 for 113 yards. And he has a minute 51 here in the first half. Davis hit hard for a loss of about a yard. Well, when you look at Terrell Davis, all the success he is having, here's what you got to do to stop him. The safeties, you got to get nine people involved coming up on the outside of the formations to take away the run when it comes to the strong side. And then when you come back to the back side, you can see number 31, Brock Marion, the other safety. There he is. What has happened so far in this game, the safeties, when they have come up, They've over-pursued, or they've missed the tackle. And a completely different game on the ground, as opposed to the first, when they met the, back in Miami on the 21st of December. Davis. But the, really, the big key so far is, I mean, we talk about this running game, the Denver offensive line is just winning the battle up front. I said to you earlier that Mike Shanahan, he said, when we played down in Miami, they just whipped us up front, so you don't think he used that at all this week to his offensive lineman, like, you know, can we make this 50-50? Let's win this battle, so we split the year, but the offensive line has done a terrific job. 135 rushing yards for the Broncos. And you know, you, you know how good they were doing and how good this offensive line, we talked to Zach Thomas, and he had the utmost respect for him, especially the center, number 66, Tom Nalen. He says he does a terrific job of run block blocking and pass blocking. Well, the Broncos burn their second time out of the half. There's Tom Nalen. Let's take a look at the numbers on these two great quarterbacks, Elway and Marino today. The Marino, 10 of 14 for 106 yards. Not much to differ there. Well, the difference is Terrell Davis. Well, it is, and both of them throwing the football extremely well when they get open receivers, and uh, John Elway's done a good job of throwing it by having receivers move, getting them open, getting good matchups, which is something the Broncos always try to do. And that is 14 rushes for 111 yards for a running back. I mean, well, I don't know if outstanding is a good word for it. Outstanding is a pretty good word. 25 seconds remaining, third and four for Elway. Davis coming at you again. Tucks it back to the 20, 25 yard line, and that's a first down. But in all likelihood, that'll be the last play of the first half. Just another good example, cutting back the backside of the defense, not doing the job for the Miami Dolphins. The Broncos will let the clock run out. And that is the end of the first half. Our halftime score, Denver 21, Miami 3. Coming up, we'll be sending you to New York in the NASDAQ MX Halftime Report. Jim Nance and company will get you caught up on the highlights and all the NFL playoff news after these messages from your local station.